Hi everyone and welcome to my channel and welcome back to another episode of the Crochet Chat Podcast. This is episode 5 and I'm your host Amanda from amandacrochets.com and in today's video I have lots of finished objects as well as one work in progress and I have a few acquisitions which I will show you at the very end. So let's just jump right into it. So the first finished object I have is this baby blanket set and I made this using the ever popular sedge stitch blanket that I have on my website and I made this using Karen Simply Soft in the light country blue colorway and this baby blanket ended up being about I believe it was 32 by 32 and I made some baby booties to go along with it. I've shared this pattern numerous times and this is the free baby booty pattern by Repeat Craft for me. And it's very simple and I really enjoy making this a lot. And I made this in the same color as the blanket. And I also made my crochet newborn hat. I do have a pattern for this which I will go ahead and link below. And I just absolutely love the simplicity of it and I just love that little band at the bottom. For the pattern, I included a few different sizes just in case you wanted to make this for an older child. So be on the lookout for that. As, like I said, I will link that in the description box below. And then finally for the blanket, like I said, I just used that sedge stitch. And I really like the texture of this blanket. And I also just did a simple single crochet border. And I have probably now like four or five of these blankets sets that will be going into my Etsy shop very soon. As I mentioned before, I just have to figure out how to take better pictures because I'm not the greatest at that. But once I figure that out, I will be on my way. So that is the first finished object that I have. So the next one that I have, I showed you my previous video. It's called the Crochet Ribbed Velvet Throw, and this is a free pattern by Daisy Farm Crafts. And in their original pattern, they used just regular Bernat Velvet yarn, but I didn't have that. I had Bernat Baby Velvet yarn, so I just switched that up and I used a size G crochet hook. And I made the blanket much smaller than intended because it's different yarn which is okay but I ended up just doing a uh, let's see a half double crochet border because I was coming up on the end of one of my skeins and I didn't want to open up a new skein so I just decided to end with just that simple half double crochet border and as you could see you do eight rows of front post and back post double crochet and then you switch up the order of them so then if you start with the front post here you start with the back post here for another eight rows and it just gives that nice textured look to it. I had a little bit of trouble with this just because I've never worked with velvet yarn before which is why I just wanted to make a small version of that blanket just to kind of understand what I'm working with with the velvet yarn. I know a lot of people have found that this yarn is very slippery and sometimes your stitches can come undone. I don't think I really noticed that too much with my velvet blanket. I think maybe in one or two spots I noticed that the stitches started to come a little bit loose but I didn't really have too much of an issue just because I really worked slow on this and I really wanted to take my time to avoid that slippery stitch that other people have experienced. So I don't know if I would um, use the same hook that I did. The recommended hook I believe for this yarn is um, a size H crochet hook so I think I would just stick with that instead of the G hook because I found this to be very 
slow moving because it's a smaller crochet hook, but either way, I still enjoyed how this came out. The next item that I finished was this pattern that I purchased from Nellis Cottage Crafts or Nellis, Nellis Cottage Crochet and it's the Amara stocking and I follow her on Facebook in her VIP Facebook group and there is a woman on there that made the alterations of this pattern to have this pattern come out very tiny and I was really excited to try that so I used Hobby Lobby I love this yarn and I used that metallic glitter yarn and the cover color was ivory and I really enjoyed how this tiny little stocking came out I think it would be so cute to put a gift card inside or just hang it up as decoration or even if you wanted to use it for baby's first stocking so I feel like there's multiple uses for it now originally I was going to use that fur yarn that I talked about in my last video it was that Lime Brand um, thick fur yarn uh, go for faux I think it was called and I did try to make it but I think with at least for me, with this tinier version of the stocking, it just wasn't going to work. I didn't really know how to use it because it was like super chunky. It was like this thick. So I might just end up using it on the full size version of this instead because the full size version is like bigger than my hand. So it is massive. It's like an oversized stocking. So because this is such a small version of it, I didn't really want to use at yarn so I'll use it for something else but this is what the size came out to be I think it ended up being about eight or nine inches from the toe to the cuff and I just ended up doing the cuff this way and folding it over and adding that hanging loop so again I really liked how this came out and I will probably be making more of these smaller versions and probably also make more of those bigger versions so this is a paid for pattern and she might have a sale going on um, every once in a while so I would be on the lookout for that especially around the holidays she might be having a sale on her pattern so I'll go ahead and leave a link below and the next one I finished was this shell stitch scarf I actually just put a video of this up on my channel so I will go ahead and link that below as well and this is just my simple shell stitch scarf that I used um, red heart with love in the color iced aqua and I really like how this came out the shell stitch is definitely one of my favorite stitches and I haven't used it in a while so I thought why not just make a scarf with it so this is what it turns out to be and like I said it's very textured and you can also use this in a variety of different colors I mentioned in my video for this that if you just have a bunch of scrap yarns or not quite full skeins of yarn you can definitely use up your skeins of yarn for the scarf I like the width of it and I like the length of it but you can always change it up depending on your preference so Again, I'll leave that video link below just in case you're interested in checking that out. I was also on a scarf kick, so I came up with this as well. Now for these scarf patterns, the shell stitch and then this waffle stitch, I had a blog post a while ago and I made these scarves but I just never ended up making a video for it so I definitely wanted to go back and look at my blog and see what kind of patterns I made that did not have a video accompanying it so this and the shell stitch scarf were two of those patterns and I do have another pattern coming up very soon it is the ribbed hat ribbed winter hat pattern and I made that a while ago as well so be on the lookout for that within the next week or two 
And this is the waffle stitch scarf. And it's very chunky, it's very cozy, and it's a very thick, nice winter scarf. And I used Karen Big Cakes in this, and I believe the color was Blue Macaroon. And I like it just because it was self-changing, so I didn't have to do any of the work. It kind of just changed colors on its own. And I thought it was very, the blues and grays I thought were very pretty for the winter season. And like I said, it's a very thick and chunky scarf, and this is what the scarf looks like from the front. And then if you flip it over, it has a little bit of a texture to the back of it. So, very simple and beginner friendly. Like I said, I show you the steps in my video, which again, I will go ahead and link below. For this final scarf, I you might recognize it. It's... Um, a new pattern that I just came out with and it should be coming out very soon if not already be out by the time that this video is posted and I use the same yarn that I used for my blossom baby blanket and this is the line brand mandala ombre in the color Tran tranquil I had a little bit of that left over so I wanted to use it up and I came up with the blossom stitch scarf so again, it's a color changing yarn and it's made using that same stitch as the Blossom Baby Blanket. I just made it into a scarf version. So this is just made with double crochets and chain stitches. So I believe a beginner could definitely make this if you just follow along with my video. And again, it just color changes are very pretty. They're very random. I noticed with the line red mandala you get a bigger section of color before it changes into a new color so that's always nice. And it's again it's a nice thick it's a nice thick scarf. You can always change up the sizing of it as well like I said in my with my previous scarves as long as you just change up the multiple and you can make it as long as you want. You just might need another skein of yarn or two. So for this particular scarf, I used one skein of that Lion Brand Mandala Ombre yarn. But if you wanted to make it bigger or longer, you would have to probably get another skein of yarn just to be on the safe side. So my for my one and only work in progress right now, aside from my knitting knitting on uh, my knitted blanket I haven't worked on my knitted blanket as much as I would like I've been very occupied with different crochet projects like I showed you all the scarf patterns that I was making I really wanted to finish up some of those um, blankets and other p projects that I had going on so I kind of put the knitting blanket on the side for right now but I hope to get to it very soon so I'm not going to show that to you since again there's been no progress on it for the last couple of weeks. This is again the Sedge Stitch Baby Blanket that I have on my website and I'm just making a gray version and I'm using Karen Simply Soft Yarn again in the gray heather color and I'm using a size 8 crochet hook for this baby blanket. This is one of my favorite patterns, as I mentioned, and I really wanted to have a few different varieties for my Etsy shop. So this is the Gray Heather color. I really like how it's turning out a lot, and I think it's very beautiful and textured, so definitely one of my favorite blankets. So that's all I'm really working on right now. Um, I'm almost done with the blanket and then soon enough I will go ahead and make the baby booties and the hat and I will show you all of my finished progress with that probably on the next crochet chat podcast episode. So finally some acquisitions. So I didn't buy any yarn lately um, so I'm trying to use up what I have in my stash. But I did see these on Etsy and I knew I had to make, I had to get them. 
So I purchased some crochet hooks from Sienna's Boutique and the shop owner is Colleen. And I've purchased some crochet hooks from her before and it was the Harry Potter crochet hooks that I showed you in a previous video but she had um, a crochet hook of a bunny and a crochet hook of a cat. Now I have two rabbits and a cat so I wanted to get the hooks to match my two rabbits and cat so I asked her if she would be able to accommodate that for me and she was more than happy to and I ended up purchasing the crochet hooks from her. So all three crochet hooks are Susan Bait crochet hooks and I had her make custom the custom crochet hook for me so the pink is the color that I would like. It's kind of like a little bit of a silver glitter. I don't know if the camera will pick that up. Let's see if I can get a little closer. And then it has a ball of string on it, a ball of yarn, and I had that made in a mint color instead of the original purple. And then the cat, which you can see right here, is a gray tabby, and it looks just like my cat, even down to the white um, back legs that she has. And she had, she always includes a little stitch marker, which you can include on this little loop here, but I did not include that right now because I wasn't using it. But this is what the cat version looks like. Very adorable. And next, she had the bunny version, and it was green on top with the orange carrot on the bottom and then it comes with a carrot stitch marker but I wanted this beautiful blue color and she included some flowers on it and she included my one rabbit which is a dark gray color and again you have that loop for the stitch marker but very adorable I really like the bunny version a lot and then for the last bunny version I had her do the same kind of base and the flowers and then just change up the bunny on top which my bunny is um, black and white so she kind of just made up the spots and I just showed her pictures of what my three animals look like and she kind of just made them as close as she can so I really enjoyed these. So for the two bunny crochet hooks they are a size H. And for the cat crochet hook, it is a size I. So if you're interested in checking her shop out, she has a ton of different versions of crochet hooks, whether you want animals or if you want kind of like different characters like Tinkerbell or other Disney characters. She has some holiday themed ones, so I will go ahead and link her shop below because I think she's fantastic. She usually says that um, hooks could take up to three or four weeks to ship out and after I asked her for the customizations of my three hooks she ended up making all three hooks and sending them to me within I believe a week and a half so super fast shipping great craftsmanship and just an overall very sweet and nice person so I will link her shop below like I said just in case if you're interested in checking that out. But that's all I have for today for my Crochet Chat Podcast Episode 5. Thank you so much for joining me and let me know in the comment section below if you're working on anything or what works in progress you have going on right now. Please like, comment, and subscribe to see all future videos by me. And as always, if there's ever a video that you would like me to make, please leave me a comment below and I will try my best to get to that video for you. Alright everybody, have a great day. Bye!